Welcome r slash nuclear revenge. Guy takes advantage of my little sister's disability, and I snap. A quick preface. This all happened about a year back. I will not be using real names, because I could be in deep shit if I did. All actors in this story will have their names replaced with Jojo references. This is a long one. Context. My little sister, henceforth known as Holly, is mute. She can actually whisper a little, but it takes a lot of effort on her part. She's been mute ever since she was five. When she lost her ability to speak in an accident she's very smart. And she's a good looking kid at the time of these events. She was 16 and I was 21 me and my sister lived together in an apartment. Because my mother is a Roma who isn't well suited to take care of a teenager she has our twin kid siblings, but not my sister and I my dad is distant from the family, so helping my sister through high school falls to me. I work at a car parts shipping company, so I get paid just enough to get by because of our relatively poor living situation and my sister's inability to speak. She gets bullied at school generally it isn't much of a problem, but in the few months leading up to these events she was having increased problems with it. Build up. At the time, Holly was 16, but she was a sophomore in high school due to failing a year in middle school. She refuses to take special ed courses, now because they didn't help her at all, because she's good looking, and is older than most of her class, she gets attention from juniors and seniors it's mostly negative attention, but there was one guy, who I will refer to as Dio from now on, he's the villain of this story, who treats her really nicely he's a senior, and at this time is 18. He repels bullies from her, because he's a tall, handsome tough guy, and bullies don't want to mess with him. I don't interfere with them, because my sister is visibly happy when she comes home from school, and whenever she's around him. I didn't let them hang out alone together, but supervised them hanging out a few times. Anyway, King Crimson a few months, and she stops coming home happy she isn't hanging out with him anymore either, and although I ask her multiple times, she won't tell me anything about it. I confront him about it, and he evades the topic at this point I'm suspicious, but I don't know what to be suspicious of. Researching. I'm getting more and more worried about Holly, so I go to her counselor and assistant principal to ask about her activities at school from what I learn. She still spends all her free time near Dio at school. I find this strange, since she doesn't seem happy anymore. This is where the illegal stuff starts a few days later. I invite Holly and Dio on a dinner night to Olive Garden. No one can resist Olive Garden. While we're there I do two things that are completely illegal. One, I steal his phone, which I've seen the password to. And two, I read his texts and emails anything I can to find out what's happened between them. I don't find what I'm looking for, but I do find out that he drinks and smokes weed with his friends on weekends. This will be relevant later. A few days later I find his phone in the laundry and say it must have ended up in one of our coats on accident. I know for a fact he got it back because he called me to thank me for having Holly return it. I still didn't have what I was looking for, so I went back to the school and used his previous texts as grounds to check CCTV for any suspicious activity there wasn't anything suspicious by school standards, but there was something that caught my eye it was my sister going to the central bathroom in the school and him going to the boys room of the same bathroom about a minute later the bathrooms are separated by a wall. But there's a janitorial closet that opens into both bathrooms and is completely in the blind zone of anyone walking into the bathrooms, let alone the CCTV cameras at this point. I began to suspect that something was happening between them in that bathroom it was the only one with a closet like that. And if my memory served me, the closet didn't have a proper lock it just locked from the outside on both sides. Boiling point. Now that I suspected something, I confronted Holly about it, she broke down crying, and after 15 minutes of consoling, she shakily signed to me something that made my blood boil apparently, it was far worse than I expected. I had thought they were going in there and doing drugs or something, since Dio was the kind of guy who would pull that kind of thing as it turns out. According to Holly, he brought her in there one day, closed the doors, held her down, and raped her he told her that he would know if she told anyone, and he would hurt her if she did, because she physically could not scream for help, or make any kind of loud noise for that matter. 
he got away with it, and the worst part is, he was threatening her into meeting him there every couple of days, and doing that to her. I was livid my first instinct was to call the police, but I realized that there was no evidence, except the testimony of mute girl. I wouldn't be satisfied with police intervention anyway the first thing I did was call Holly in for a week from school. Family emergency can get them a week of excused absences easily. The next thing I did was find out where he lived after that. I planned the most brutal revenge I could think of. Highly illegal revenge. My first step was to break into his house. It turns out his parents go out a lot and he leaves to smoke and drink with his friends. I knew from reading his texts that there was a spare key on top of the porch light in the backyard that Saturday. I scoped out the place and waited for everyone to leave. I then began phase one of my revenge. I went into his house through the back door and found his room. I smashed his PC, stole his wallet, and pissed on his bed then I poorly hid to small bags of weed in his house. I have a friend who grows. Finally, to hide the fact that it was targeted, I tossed up the rest of the house, but didn't take anything. I then went to a Starbucks and used the Wi-Fi and Dio's debit card, he didn't have credit, to purchase a bunch of sex toys in his name and send them to his house. I then left his wallet sitting near homeless man sleeping on a park bench next. I contacted his parents and told them I had seen their son. Drinking and smoking with a group of teenagers they were furious, which leads me to believe that wasn't the first time something like that had happened. Finally, I went to the back road he walked on his way home from his drinking parties, which I had found out in a text from one of his friends. I waited for 2 hours in some bushes for him to walk by, and then, wearing sunglasses and a hoodie, jumped him. I demanded his money and phone, although I knew he didn't have his wallet. I kept one hand in my hoodie pocket, pointing it like I had a gun, which he believed he handed over his phone and ran away. I then finished up my plan by using his phone, which I still had the password to, to send an email to the school from his school email, confessing to raping my sister in the janitorial closet multiple times, as well as possessing drugs on school grounds, and drinking alcohol. When he was underage then I snapped his phone on my knee and went home. Aftermath. My sister went back to school the following Monday, armed with a can of mace I bought her. Dio wasn't at school, and she was called in by her counselor she confessed, and he was charged with rape, underage drinking, and illegal drug possession on top of that, his parents completely disowned him, and he was expelled from the school sadly, this story doesn't have a completely happy end this whole ordeal sent Holly into a downward spiral her grades fell behind, and she barely smiled in March of 2018. She attempted suicide by cutting herself, and it was pure luck that I found her in time she's getting better now, but the emotional trauma will probably affect her for life. I pray to whatever cruel gods are out there that he gets a taste of his own medicine in prison. What we need for him is something much much worse. I think what he deserves is something along the lines of starving him for days in a cell with almost no light and enclosed completely except for a little centimeter wide hole so that he can barely breathe. He will be forced to watch a slice of cake on the other side of the cell that he is unable to eat because every limb of his body is chained tightly to the side of a wall of his cell. Then, he will be electrocuted with about 1000 volts of electricity, but it doesn't end there. After that, his arms and legs will be ripped off the side of his body by tightening the chains on his arms. To slow down the bleeding, so he can suffer more, we will cover his body up with bandages, but they will be coated with a layer of poison, so that his entire bloodstream is pretty much infected. He will soon die a slow and painful death, as the cell will be filled with serine, very deadly nerve gas, and as his respiratory system fails on him, he will be burned alive. Whoa. This is kind of dark, but the dip crap deserves it. Trust me he will get much worse inmates hate people that advantage slash hurt women, and especially children that is cho mo's, prison slang term for child molesters, so he will most likely get jumped slash shanked or shived slash raped by multiple inmates multiple times, when they find out, and they will find out be it from the news or a guard. Edit. For people wondering, if shanks and shivs are the same thing they are not shanks are made for stabbing shivs are made for stabbing and rudimentary cutting. Yeah, this whole thing is made up. 
It sounds like something out of a sitcom, aside from the dark parts. I'm guessing they're doing this to try and get some money from a sympathetic crowd. I'm a parent, and I can't even get into my kid's school without ringing a bell, appearing on several cameras, and then getting an escort, and I'm a firefighter in the city. I'm in these schools all the damn time for one reason or another. Not to mention, if Holly ever got caught with Mace in school, she'd be expelled. I doubt anyone would risk that. How did he get the kid's phone, too? That's pretty crucial, and he just brushes right over it. This kid's parents wrote him off? I doubt that. It's pretty rare that both parents completely disown a child over one thing, no matter how bad. Hell, my father's the biggest piece of shit walking, and my grandmother will still talk to him if he calls her. I could go on, but I'm pretty sure it's not needed. This whole story is bullshit. Yeah. Honestly this story has too many convenient get outs for Opus. Oh, he's got a friend that grows weed. He breaks in and turns up the house, then the bags of weed are never fingerprinted after someone was clearly there and took nothing else. Oh, he just happened to read in his texts that there's a spare key handy outside the house. Oh, the dude just happened not to know who just mugged him and buys the gun in my pocket trick. Oh, the testimony of mute girl for some reason doesn't carry any weight, even though there's video of these two people going into the closet regularly. But for some reason there's no mention of any recording of when she gets out of it, looking as if she's just been raped. At all. Oh, and the closet is always unlocked on both the male and the female side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if he watched the video with the vice principal and counselor they would have been concerned about that and wanted to look into it more. Also, him saying she wouldn't have been believed is ridiculous when there was video proof. This whole story reads as completely unbelievable. How did he get the guy's phone while they were eating at Olive Garden? Teens don't let their phones out of their sight. No way he could get his phone away from him long enough to read all his texts and go through his pics and everything without the guy knowing about it while they're all sitting there eating dinner together. Why would his sister agree to go to dinner with her apist in the first place? His excuse is because nobody can turn down Olive Garden. I'm pretty sure Olive Garden isn't that great that I'd be willing to sit next to my rapist just for their breadsticks and salad. The breadsticks are good and all, but I'd rather eat dry Cheerios than have to eat dinner with my rapist sitting next to me. How is anyone believing this ridiculous story? There are more holes here than in Swiss cheese. I mean this isn't true, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Op would be a prime suspect in a matter of hours regardless of the urine. He contacted the parents. How does he even have their numbers? Saying he saw their son, making him someone the police would immediately interview. Contacted the school from the stolen phone to write a confession that directly involves his family. And three, has a clear motive to attack the kid. Not particularly hard to connect the dots, but seeing how Op is a 20 day old account and somehow hasn't been arrested or interviewed I'm gonna assume it's fake. Right. I'm astounded this story has as many upvotes as it does. This whole thing reads like a pathetic anim obsessed teen's fantasy. I find it hard to believe he could just look at school security cameras based off drug related texts the guy had. If he gave those texts to the school they would have taken action against the kid, assuming they don't question how he got those texts. If for some reason they let him see the cameras, just because he says he suspects them of doing drugs, something the school could easily investigate without him, we are just supposed to believe he looked through hours of security footage to find a time when his sister was going to the bathroom? More importantly he would be the prime suspect for the break-in and robbery almost immediately seeing how he has a personal connection to the guy. He emailed the school from the stolen phone confessing to a crime that affects his own family and he called the parents. How does he have their number? Moments before the kid was robbed. It doesn't take a genius to solve this. It's a 20 day old account and reads like a kid's fantasy. Pathetic of op, but even more pathetic for how much attention it's getting. Good on you, dude. But I got to the end, and I'm worried about your sister. I've suffered some sexual abuse in my life, and after pushing it away from my mind for years it finally caught up to me last year. I've always struggled with depression, and it just hit an absolute low. 
I've been in counseling for the past year, just through my university, and it has been an absolute lifesaver. I truly mean that. Please, please look into options for her. I know that women's and family shelters in my area offer free treatment for survivors of sexual assault slash domestic violence, so hopefully there is something like that where you live. If you can, I recommend trying to find a counselor who can do EMDR therapy. It was developed to help process traumatic events and combat PTSD, and it sounds like your C's could be struggling with that. Thank you for getting rid of him, before he could keep hurting her, or hurt any other vulnerable person. What a sick sick piece of shit. This isn't a nice story that makes you happy for the guy who got his revenge. This is so sad because there isn't really anything you or anyone, for that matter, could do that could neutralize no better word available in the English language, at least to my knowledge, this horrible experience your sister had to go through. At least, she still has you. You must obviously love her very much if you risk going to prison for years. To make sure this guy doesn't get away with this. I hope your sister will recover from this trauma and live a happy life. This kind of sad and helpless anger you feel when you think about things that are extremely upsetting slash sad slash upsetting but that you cannot do anything about is truly one of the worst emotions known to mankind. I just thought of a way how she could protect herself better. Some device that produces a really loud, high-pitched sound and calls for help that cannot be turned off for at least 2 minutes and requires you to do something really fiddly in order to turn it off for instance a really strong wristband that cannot be taken off without a key or something 